This question is going to explore the relationship between pH and buffer solutions. To begin with, we're going to consider what's in a buffer solution. It can be made from a weak acid in its salt or a weak base in its salt. The equations below show the dissolution of a salt, Ma. So let's start with that. We start with some concentration of a salt. That salt, we're going to assume, dissociates 100% into M cations and A anions over here. And we're interested in the anions in this particular case. Because it dissociates 100%, we can assume that the initial concentration of our salt is going to be equal to the initial concentration of our anion. So these two things will be equal to each other in this case. Now let's consider our weak acid. We have some sort of initial concentration of our weak acid. We'll assume that there's no hydrogen ions in excess in our solution, and the concentration of our anion we've got from our salt that we've added. So this concentration will be the same as our salt. Now this will dissociate a certain percent, causing the hydrogen ion to go up and causing the concentration of our anion to go up. Now, we're going to make a small assumption here that because we are generally using weak acids, the equilibrium constant for this particular reaction is small. In fact, we're going to assume that Ka is less than 10 to the minus 3. If that's the case, we can assume that this line is small. So at equilibrium, this concentration down here will be approximately equal to the initial concentration of my acid. This will then be the concentration of the hydrogen ion, and this concentration down here will also be simplified. It'll be approximately the concentration of our salt, Ma. So at equilibrium and using this line, we can say our acid dissociation constant is the concentration of the hydrogen ion times the concentration of our salt. Divided by the concentration of our acid. Now, some of you may be introduced to a slightly different equation than this, and I'll try to develop it. Let's isolate for a moment what the hydrogen ion is equal to. So in this case, that hydrogen ion that we have here would be equal to Ka times the concentration of our acid that was initially present divided by the concentration of our salt that was initially present. I'm now going to take the negative log of both sides. So I would have the negative log of the hydrogen ion. That would equal the negative log of Ka one of the properties of logs I'll employ here, and that will be then the same as adding because essentially these are being multiplied. So I'm going to add the negative log of my initial acid concentration over my salt concentration. Some of you might recognize that the negative log of the hydrogen ion is the pH. And the negative log of Ka is the pKa. And I'm now going to add to that the negative log of this, which essentially is the log of the, these two switching positions. So that would then be the log of my salt concentration that was initially present over the concentration of my weak acid that was initially present. This is called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. 
and it looks like this. So your teacher may have shown you this particular relationship to use in buffer questions. The issue is this equation is not available in our IB data booklet, so you would need to commit it to memory. I could also, in a similar fashion, develop an equation if my pH buffer was a basic solution using this. Let's go apply this now to a particular question. Now, I'm going to solve this the long way. What I mean by that is I'm not going to imply the shortcut that's shown by the Henderson-Hesselbach equations. So, we're to determine the mass of our salt that's present in our solution to make a buffer whose pH is 4.9 using this particular weak acid. So I'm going to start with an equation for the equilibrium of my weak acid. So the concentration that I start with of this, of the weak acid, is 0 0.100, which is right there. The concentration of this, this is what I'm essentially after. I want to know what is this initial concentration of my acetate ion. That's really what I'm after. And then I can determine the mass. So that's my unknown. I'm also told the pH of my solution. That allows me to get this information. So from a pH equal to 4.9, I know the concentration of the hydrogen ion is negative 10.49. Now, this is going to dissociate a certain amount, and these will then go up correspondingly. Now again, Ka is small. If I'm told that pKa is 10 to the 4.76, then Ka is 10 to the negative 4.76, which is less than 10 to the minus 3, which allows me to make the assumption that these are small. So at equilibrium, the concentration of my salt, or the acetate ion, here, will be the same as what I initially started with. And in a similar fashion, that will occur here as well. The concentration of my acid at equilibrium will be the same as my starting concentration. So let's write what Ka is equal to. Well, it's the concentration of the hydrogen ion times the concentration of my acetate ion divided by the concentration of my um, acetic acid. Let's put in these values. This is going to be 10 to the negative 4.76. The hydrogen ion is 10 to the negative 4.9. This is what I'm after, the concentration of my acetate ion, which we assume to be the same as the initial concentration, divided by the concentration of my acetic acid on the bottom. And that's the same as 10 to the negative 1. Let's do a little bit of rearrangement so we can get our unknown by itself. So the concentration of our acetate ion that was initially present in our solution is going to be 10 to the negative 4.76 times 10 to the negative 1 divided by 10 to the negative 4.9. Leaving it in this fashion, I can subtract the exponents from the top and from the bottom. And this will then give me 10 to the negative 0.86. And that comes out to 0 0.138, and that concentration would be moles per decimeter cubed. So that would be the initial concentration then of acetate that would have been in my solution. But we're after 
ultimately what's the mass? So now I'm going to calculate the number of moles that must have been present. I get that by going concentration times volume. So 0.138 moles per decimeter cubed times then my volume, which was 200 cubic centimeters or 0 0.200 decimeters cubed. Those will then cancel and I'll get 0 0.0276 moles then of my original salt. Now, my original salt has that molar mass, so I can calculate the mass by going the number of moles times the molar mass. And we'll just continue that here. So the mass then would equal 0 0.0276 moles. And I'm going to multiply that by 82.03 grams per mole. And those will cancel, giving me a final answer of 2.26 grams. So that's it. You have really two ways you can go about dealing with these questions. One is to memorize the Henderson-Hasselbalch equations, or you can revert back to first principles and the use of the ice table to solve an equilibrium problem.